Okay, let's move on to step number one, installation requirements. Very important notes right here. You do not want to install this on a domain controller whatsoever or an exchange server. Also, you want to make sure that all the Windows updates on the OS have been completed. Reboot the box, run them again, make sure there are none. All right, sometimes that requires a restart, so take that in consideration. If you're installing this on a virtual machine, after the updates have been completed, take a clean snapshot of it. That way, if you have to roll it back, you can. Also, you're going to need to set the AV exclusions, and we give you hyperlinks here in the deployment guide. I'm going to go through those in a little bit. And as we scroll down through here, we're not going to install SQL Express. That's included with the product, but instead we're going to use Full SQL. So I'm going to go down here. Now, as far as the hardware requirements, the OS has to be a 64-bit. The supported operating systems, Windows 8.1, 10, 2012, and 2016 for up to 500 users. Anything above that, of course, you're going to want to use a server class OS. All right, for my demonstration here today, I'm going to utilize Windows Server 2016. As far as the hardware, server class system, it could be a workstation if you're installing this as a POC or, or again a virtual machine. Quad core Xenon processor and then 16 gigs of RAM. Anything above 500 you're going to want 32. So the more RAM the better because of SQL. As far as the disk space, 100 gigs that's good to start out with. I always typically like to go a little higher that way if the customer wants to you know adjust settings they have room to grow without you having to come back and expand the disk. The software prereqs you gotta install .NET 461 and sometimes it requires a restart so take that in consideration and then these other two components are installed automatically. Now the ports used HTTPS 443 is the standard port. You can change that during the installation or use our server address changer tool to change that once the installation is complete. All these other things are, are used for SQL, the browser service, and of course the random port. All right, and that tool can also change those as well. And then um, we're going to utilize SQL standard 2016. All right. So that kind of sums up for the server requirements. I'm just going to kind of scroll through here so you can see other things such as clients and so forth. Okay, so the next step is going to be data storage considerations. Now this is a daily average of data storage per user. Right? For recon it's typically around 0.4 megabyte, but that could be higher or lower depending on how many alerts that you have set up in the metadata coming into the SQL database. As far as the user's data, and that's everything aside from screen snapshots, it could be around one megabyte or more, depending on the recorded policy settings. All right, and that's stored in a SQL database as well. For the screen snapshots, we're seeing on an average around 36 megabytes. However, if the user has more monitors or large monitors, depending on the resolution of them, that could be around 36 megabytes or higher. And the screen snapshots are set by default to take a photo every 30 seconds. Now below, we've kind of given you a little breakdown of what you can expect. These are estimates only. So we go from the users from five all the way to a thousand. And we kind of break down the recon data, you know, giving you an idea of what that might be, the 360 data going into the database, and of course the screen snapshots. Then lastly down here we break it down into a kind of a three-month projection for you. That way you can kind of give your customers an estimate of what they might see. But remember, these are only estimates. Depending on the user, depending on the machine, uh, these could change, right, in the recorded policy settings.